Might as well, welcome back to the shop. This is a rant. Um, painting engines. Uh, someone left me a comment. <laughs> Let's start that again. Fucking hell. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about painting engines, and, um, oh my fucking god, so this is actually me proper, this is going to be a rant rant, um, I'm not going to change my mind about this halfway through or out, like some of the rants where I go, meh, it's nothing like that, um, painting engines, uh, American chopper are fucking assholes for doing this, more American hot rod, you know, you've seen these, uh, you've probably seen these, shows on the Discovery Channel, people do it a lot and it does my fucking head in. Um, you'll see them just paint an engine and someone left a comment, we were talking about exhaust wraps and stuff like that or painting exhausts and I said that you know a lot of the ceramic fucking spider again, a lot of the uh, ceramic coatings on um, exhausts are in a sense physically bonded and paint is just literally laid on top. Um, and then he said, what about painting engines? Painting engines to do with insulation on the rest, it really isn't that much of a problem. Because um, the paint will just get hot as well. Um, the um, aluminium oxide layer is actually quite a good insulator and that's naturally there anyway. Uh, so in a sense, yes, your aluminium oxide is probably a bit thinner. A bit, I think it's like 5 to 10 microns if it's just natural. Or 10 microns paint can be up from 10 to 30, 40, 50, stuff like that. Depends obviously on who does the coating. But what I'm fucked off about is where they will they will have a surface on your engine and then they'll have like a, a fucking nut, you know, a flange nut. Oh bloody hell, that's horrible. A flange nut and they'll just fucking lack of paint all over the whole fucking thing. Oh my god, that is so fucking annoying. It really does piss me off because as soon as you go to take that nut off, it doesn't come off cleanly. It cracks here and here and everywhere, and it looks like shit. And the stupid thing is, is how many times in American Hot Rod have they had a bracket that doesn't fit or something like that, and then they have to go and repaint the engine? Dickheads! It's just don't fucking do it. Spray the individual components individually. And then, because you're parting lines, you see, that's the thing. You go to take your head off, you're going to crack the paint. And it, oh, fuck's sake. Same with powder coating. Powder coating, paint, whatever. Don't fucking do it as one complete engine. Done the ER5, and I went through it on the ER5 about how much it does my tits in. Um, but a lot of people haven't seen that video. Do not paint your engine unless you are 100% confident you're never going to open it up. You know what I mean? And American Hot Rod, yeah, they do it for time's sake, but it's bad. It's a bad practice. It's a really bad practice. Don't fucking do it. Don't follow them numpties. You'll fucking regret it instantly. The other thing I want to say about paints as well is, my God, give them time to dry. A lot of the home done paint jobs and all the rest of it, be, be it panels, be it a swing arm, be it anything, is that people don't give these things enough time to dry. They will paint it, leave it overnight, and think, bingo, we're all fucking good. And especially when it comes to lacquer, because you usually paint thinner coats of lacquer, but you usually paint more of them on. Every time that you lay down a layer of lacquer, um, it has got to outgas. It has got to be the solvent has basically got to evaporate off. It's got to piss off. And depending on the humidity of where you live, if you live out in the middle of Death Valley or the Atacama Desert, God, your paint coatings are going to be fantastic. You just have to go in the back and beyond to do it. Um, it'll dry really quick because there's the you know the lack of humidity and the temperature generally. Although the Atacama gets cold and what have you. Now the thing is, as soon as you 10-15 minutes later go and put another layer on the top of it, you are now blocking, um, you know, you're blocking, you're restricting that layer's ability to outgas. And then what do you do? You come along 15 minutes later and you put a fucking another layer on like that. You know what I mean? And so on and so on. I don't have to draw any more bloody lines. You can see the problem. You're not letting it outgas. And the more layers you put on, the longer it needs to be left. Now, generally, my rule of thumb, 
and I know there's going to be some paint guys that go, yeah, I'm going to leave it that long. Look, it's just, it's just safety's sake. I paint a tank, I leave the lacquer for a week, just a straight week. Just, if you get that into your head, you know, that you're going to do that, then just accept it. And you leave it for a week. The lacquer on this tank is absolutely fantastic. There's no squishiness to it. It's literally, it's rock hard. You can feel it. You can feel the lacquer um, when it hardens up. The other thing to do is try and leave it in natural sunlight, you know. If you're going to do your... If you're going to do a big project to start painting your bike, do it over the summer months. Uh, yes, you have the bastard of the, uh, you know, of all the insects and all the rest of the shit floating in the air, pollen and all that rubbish. However, um, leave your tank in fucking sunlight uh, and don't... I should be very clear about this. So when you first spray it, don't leave it in direct sunlight. That's what I wouldn't do um, because sometimes the UV can actually cause the lacquer to start separating and doing weird funky things. So the best thing to do is to spray it, um, just spray it and then just, you know, don't intentionally leave it in, you know, broad sunlight. The day after, if you can take it outside and then leave it in the sun, do. You know what I mean? It's the infrared that's going to help heat the tank up. If you heat the tank up, everything expands a little, which in the sense the pores in the lacquer do, so it allows everything to evaporate and then the UV gets in there and bakes everything properly and nice you know and try and le le like le get it into your head leave it for a week and then you will have no issues you know in factories and that they have giant infrared lamps and what have you that do the job instead but they've you know they've tailored that process so they can put the minimal amount of paint on the minimal amount of lacquer and then you know and then they have a heat treatment and they basically test the chip resistance and all the rest of it of that process because they're trying to save money but also make sure that in six months it all just doesn't fucking flake off. Um, but yeah, don't paint your paint your engines, try and use a kind of enamel. I use if I can find it. Um, it's the Simonis Simonis, whatever it's fucking called. I'll put a picture up now. Uh, it's this stuff, it's just uh, engine enamel. Now it's not really enamel. <laughs> That's uh, a bit of a misnomer there, the bastards. Uh, it's not an enamel, so it's not a ceramic coating whatsoever. It's basically, it's an oil-based acrylic and they get away with calling it enamel. I don't know how, but trading standards don't seem to give a shit. But um, it's not a real enamel enamel coating, but it's a high te a higher temperature coating. It's got silica in and it's silica in and all sorts of fucking lovely jubblies. So it is a higher temperature paint. Um, powder coating your engine depends how hot it gets. Now there are some engines that run really hot, and I haven't got a list for you. But if you think if you you know you've had a couple of bikes, you go God this, and I sit on it after like you know you've stopped. I don't mean in traffic, you've stopped and you just sit on it for 10 minutes. Or you go and leave your bike and you come back to it 10 minutes later and you sit on it and you go, God, that's fucking hot. You've got to be careful and make sure you do kind of use a high temperature paint for that. Plastic powder coating, plastic coating um, can be okay. It's, you know, um, generally it's alright, but you go and check your forums. You know, go and check your forums for the bike you have and see if anyone asked the question or see if anyone's already posted something up about your particular machine um, but don't fucking paint over the bolts and paint the head to the cylinder block I know it sounds ridiculous and I know this seems like a common sense thing but like I say a international show that millions have watched like American Hot Rod and American Chopper they fucking do it all the time uh, one of the other things and I will do a rant about American Chopper I'll show you examples of um, fucking they go and send the frame away to be uh, powder coated or painted and then after the fact, oh fucking hell, I forgot this bracket. And they're using a fucking Christmas tree bit, a step drill bit. And they're just drilling big fucking holes in brand new steel, and uh, brand new painted steel. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I know they're always rushing stuff, but can you please not? You know what I mean? American Chopper. And the thing is, them guys who, are, who know what they're doing should put the foot down and say, I know you want this fucking done, but it ain't going to happen. They've got to understand this at the time that they were the show. Discovery Channel can either sign them up or not, but if Discovery Channel don't sign them up, there is no show. So they had a bit of power, and they could say, we're not rushing this to this extreme, fuck you. And, you know, American Chopper's shit, I don't, I can't stand it. 
No, it's not anything to do with choppers, it's got nothing to do with Harley Davidson's or anything shit like that. It's got to do with the fact that it's just a fucking melodrama, it's a fucking... Yeah, it... it oh, oh, is it's lost his rag again? Fucking hell, quick, get out the tissues! It's like, fuck's sake. It was more about the bikes and then the people, but it's more about the people and there's bikes in the background as, you know, decoupage. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Like I say, don't do it. You'll just fucking regret it. Don't just, you know, paint your engine. Um, because it's bad. It's bad, bad, bad. Um, hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.